in the uh, winter of 2002, I sat down with uh, Clark and Lois Bennett and Chuck and Donna Pearson, and uh, I was a new pastor here. I'd only been here a few months, and I asked them the history of Berean Baptist Church, and I, I think we sat for hours. It, it, it might have been four hours. We sat there, and they told stories and, and, uh, and just gave me the, the wonderful history of this church, and, uh, and I loved it, and I took notes the whole time and wrote all these things down, and, and uh, then uh, the Lord laid on my heart to write uh, a, a play of the history, just one facet. Now, here's what you have to understand. You will see one facet of the history. It is, it is the church history, but one, one part. Imagine all the parts. That's what's so exciting. All over the world, there are parts that started 75 years ago at the starting of Berean Baptist Church. And so we'd like to present Berean's first Christmas. Our story begins in 1938. The United States was in the midst of what is now called the Great Depression. Rumors of war were in the air. For many, it was a discouraging time. Though businesses closed and times were hard, in Adrian, Michigan, there was a group of people who believed in God's power and met each week at the Gospel Tabernacle. Though it was a privately owned meeting place and not an official organized church, the services were lively with people getting saved weekly. As in many churches, even today, the choir would usually sing a special immediately before the sermon. Most often, the services at the Gospel Tabernacle were led by a man affectionately known as Preacher Yaxley. And finally, turn in your Bibles to Psalm 34.1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. That means, my brothers, that God wants our mouths so busy praising Him that they will be too full of praise to mutter a complaint. Psalm 147.1 also reminds us, 
Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and praise is comely. In these hard times, it is good to praise the Lord. I would go so far as to say we need to praise him. It is the praise-minded Christian that most often notices that great things happen in the midst of hard times. Preacher Yaxley was a special man, well known for always looking for God to do great things, even in the midst of trials. Many times after his sermon, he would go and spend time helping and encouraging those who attended the services. As we close the service this evening, I'd like to ask you all to be in prayer for our our dear friend and brother in Christ, Wynn Bennett. He's very ill and will soon be graduating to heaven. Please also continue to pray for his son, Harold, and his family during this hard time. Harold still needs to be saved. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your... Preacher Yaxley went to the Bennett home that night, never anticipating the importance of that one visit. Its effects are still felt today, 75 years later. Why does that preacher have to come here anyway, Bessie? Well, now, Harold, you know how your father loved those people. I know, I know, but there's nothing that he can do for Dad. Why does he insist on coming? I'll get it. Hello, preacher Yaxley. Hello, Don. Come on in. Dad's in the living room. Hello, Reverend. Let me take you to my dad. Thank you, Harold. By the way, we're all praying for you. Well, save your prayers for my dad. Not that they'll do any good. Even with a Christian father, Harold Bennett was not a believer and had no interest in spiritual things. Have I a heart of stone, so cold and dark within, that I can view the Savior in anguish for my sin, and never sorrow feel? For all he sacrificed, have I a heart of stone to watch the bleeding cries? Have I no eyes to see that I can stand so near? and watch the Savior wounded, but never shed a tear. Can I but coldly gaze upon his painful loss? Have I no eyes to see God's Lamb upon the cross. As I behold the blood and view the crucified, The piercing thought o'erwhelms me, T'was for my sin he died. Lord, make my soul to feel Thy suffering on the tree. Lord, break this heart of stone. Lord, make my eyes to see. Lord, make my eyes to see.
Hello, Lynn. This is Preacher Yaxley. Well, hello there, Preacher. It's so good to see you. I guess you've come to watch me go to heaven. Oh, Dad, don't talk like that. It's okay, son. I know where I'm going, and I know it will be soon. Let me read some scripture to you, Wynn. John 14 says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. That's waiting for you when the Lord will take care of your son. Let's sing Amazing Grace. Okay. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now who am found was blind, but they're singing. My dad's about to die, and they're in there singing. Oh, Harold, let them be. Your father must find some comfort in that song. The two men continued to talk, sing hymns, and quote the Bible throughout the evening. Eventually, Harold and Bessie fell asleep as the evening turned to night and then to morning.
Jesse, I must have fallen asleep. It's morning. Did you hear the preacher leave? No. I didn't. I'll, I'll go check and see. <gasps> He's still here. Look. Oh, Dad. Dad, I feel so bad for you. Don't feel bad, Harold. Your dad's now in heaven with Jesus. The angels came and took him about an hour ago. That's what you believe. And that's what he believed. He wanted so badly for you to know Jesus as your Savior. All I know is that this is the worst day of my life. But this could be the greatest day of your life if... You would just believe as your dad believed. You see, Jesus came one dark night just like this, and he lived a perfect life, and he died on the cross to pay for your sin. Yeah. Why would Jesus care about me? Because he loves you. Here, look. The Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Well, I'm not ready for any of that. But I, one thing I do know is that you loved my dad, didn't you? I mean, you were here all night. Yes, I did. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll come and hear you preach. I promise. Great, Harold. The love that preacher Yaxley showed to the family that night made a lasting impression on Harold. He saw something that night he'd never seen before, God's love. God's love shown not just in how preacher Yaxley had stayed all night with his dying father, but also in how his father had died, peacefully. In just a few short weeks, Harold kept his promise, as he and his family visited the Gospel Tabernacle. the service the Bennetts attended, preacher Yaxley preached on the subject that Harold had been thinking about almost constantly since his dad died, the love of God. He'd heard it all before, but now it seemed different. Even the choir's special focused his attention on God's love. Thank you. 
It is his free gift. Listen to John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Whosoever means you. If you've never accepted God's love gift as your own, I implore you, why don't you come now and receive it for yourself? that followed Harold's salvation brought radical change and rapid spiritual growth in Harold's life. Bessie and their three children were also saved. Soon they attended all the services at Gospel Tabernacle and were excited about what God was doing in their lives. Though all seemed well in Adrian, all was not well in the rest of the world. In 1939, Germany, under the leadership of Adolf Hitler, invaded Poland to begin World War II. Later, on December 7, 1941, the Japanese brought the U.S. into the war with their sneak attack on Hawaii at Pearl Harbor. Late in 1942, a group of people, including Harold and his family, believed that it was God's will that they form an organized, officially established church in the area. On December 10, 1942, 
The following letter was sent out throughout the city. Dear friends, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be interested to learn that there is to be something new in your community. For quite some time, God has laid upon the hearts of a group of men and women the need for an independent testimony for Christ in this area that should be organized and governed in strict accordance with the teachings of New Testament Scripture. After weeks of earnest prayer and deliberation, this group has felt led of the Lord to begin such a work in Adrian. The Lord has been pleased to make available for our place of meeting the auditorium of the Masonic Temple, located on the corner of East Maumee and Broad Streets. The Rev. C. S. Rossborough has accepted the invitation, recently extended to him by this group, to serve as pastor and will be in charge of the first services to be conducted next Sunday, December 13, at 11 a.m. and 7.30 p.m., respectively. The decision to begin such a work at this particular time has been made fully conscious of the unusual conditions under which we are now living and of the tremendous responsibilities being placed upon us. But all about us are hearts that are bleeding and broken. These are the days when men need to be brought face to face with God and His claims upon them, as well as His willingness and ability to help them. In the midst of the conditions of the present hour, there is a place and a need for the testimony and ministry of a group of Christian men and women who will go all out for Jesus Christ. The burden of our hearts is for the salvation of the lost at home and abroad. The supreme purpose and object of our effort shall be to bring honor and glory and praise unto our precious Lord Jesus, who loved us and gave himself for us. We invite your earnest and prayerful consideration of this new movement for the salvation of souls and for the glory of God. Yours through matchless grace, Fred Anger, Temporary Chairman. On December 13, 1942, the new church, Adrian Bible Fellowship, held their first service with Pastor C.S. Rossborough presiding. The people were excited about the new church, made even more special by beginning during the Christmas season.
this church is starting in the midst of war and in the midst of depression. Remember, we are called to be the light in darkness. Just as Jesus came and gave us all on Calvary at the cross, we must go all out for him. Souls are hurting. Souls are dying. They must hear that Jesus loves them. They must learn that there is hope. Soon you will have an opportunity to become a charter member of this church. Imagine the difference we can make in our community and even across the whole world. The people took the pastor's words to heart. They went all out. Each week, most of the members went soul winning in the community. Many people were saved. The church congregation was growing. But just a year later, in November of 1943, God called Pastor Rossborough to another ministry in Chicago. The people of the church, though saddened by his leaving, continued to serve the Lord and prayerfully sought God's will in finding a new pastor. This would be another opportunity for God to do something great in the midst of a trial.
Yes, yes, I know that these are difficult times, but these are also special times. Remember, I was saved during difficult times, but God is always evident during hard times. Gordon, tell them about Sunnyside. Well, this is the way I understand it. There's a lady, Mrs. Brainerd, who's working, she's a children's worker. She works with all the un underprivileged children in that neighborhood. And because of her deep burden for these children and their families, she's invited an evangelist to come hold revival services in her home. There's no way that they can come close to meeting his expenses. I believe we should all go to these meetings and try to be a blessing to this man of God. The group from Adrian Bible Fellowship did attend the meetings at Sunnyside and enjoyed hearing the Baptist evangelist, Rev. E.A. Hook. Upon his arrival to Sunnyside, Rev. Hook realized that the congregation was comprised mostly of children and that there would probably not be enough offerings even to cover his travel expenses. However, his heart went out to these people. The heartfelt singing by the children touched his heart, and he knew that it was God's will that he minister there. Having the group from Adrian Bible Fellowship attend encouraged his heart. God's leading soon became evident, and leaders of Adrian Bible Fellowship asked the evangelist to pray about becoming their pastor. The preacher and the people both felt that it was God's will, and E.A. Hook became the pastor of the church in March 1944. Pastor Hook made it clear that eventually the church would need to change their name to reflect their Baptist belief. Finally, in September of 1944, the church became known as Berean Baptist Church. We are Berean because we believe in searching the scriptures daily. And, and having searched, we receive the word with all readiness of mind. We are Baptist because we believe what Baptists have always believed, that God has given us every word of scripture and that no scripture is of private interpretation. God means what he says. We are saved by grace through faith. And not of works. Jesus is God, born of a virgin, to die for our sins so that we can go to heaven instead of hell when we die. 
We believe that Jesus is coming again and that afterwards the earth will go through seven years, seven years of tribulation. As a church, we are called out by God to carry out his commission of telling everyone here and abroad the wonderful gospel that Jesus saves. Let's go all out! Again, the people responded to the message from the man of God. Church members went out weekly into the community, door to door, inviting people both to attend church and to trust Christ as their Savior. Although their son Clark was off serving in World War II, Harold and his family remained faithful to services and to the weekly soul winning. Their youngest daughter, Donna, was the first person baptized after the church name was changed. God rewarded this faithfulness in an amazing way starting with one simple soul-winning call. May I help you? Yes, we are Harold and Bessie Bennett from Green Baptist Church. Oh, well, won't you come in? I'm Charles. This is Ruby Pearson. These are our boys, Chuck, Clark, and Denver. Did you say Baptist Church? Yeah, we're from Bria Baptist Church of Adrian. We just moved here from Oklahoma, and we were looking for a Baptist church to attend. Well, that's great. Are you Christians? Ruby and I are. So what... Uh, Brings you to our house tonight. Well, this is part of our soul winning ministry. Wow. That sounds like a church we'd like to attend. Are there any pretty girls there? Charles, <laughs> quiet. The Pearsons visited Berean the very next Sunday and joined as members not long after. Chuck, their oldest son, soon realized his need for salvation and was saved. A deacon named B.J. Weidecker began to disciple him and Chuck grew rapidly in the Lord. It wasn't long before Chuck spotted Donna Bennett. Because of the many teen activities, Chuck was able to actively pursue her, though Donna showed little interest most of the time. Dad, I'm glad you go soul winning. Yeah, it's good to obey God. And soul winning has brought us many blessings. Yes, blessings. What's that supposed to mean? Well... Do you remember several years ago when you knocked on the Pearson's door? Yes, I remember that. Um, does this have anything to do with Charles? Well, Dad, you know that he was saved and baptized, and he really loves the Lord. For several years now, he's been chasing me, and at first I wasn't at all interested, but he wouldn't give up. Now I'm very interested. In fact, I would like to marry him. Please pray for us that we do God's will. Well, make sure he comes to see me first. Chuck Pearson did indeed marry his sweetheart Donna, with Harold's blessing, of course. Together, following the example of their parents, they faithfully served in many different areas of ministry, including music, soul winning, and Chuck's discipleship of his boys in Boys Brigade. Today, Pearson descendants can be found serving across the country as Christian school and Sunday school teachers, soul winners, bus workers and drivers, nursery and children's workers, short-term missionaries, musicians, and even a deacon and preacher or two. Clark Bennett safely returned from World War II and eventually married Lois, the daughter of another member. They too served the Lord faithfully at Berean in music and other areas, most notably in starting Berean's shepherd's class and bus ministry. 
a program that currently averages 75 kids each week. But Berean's story still continues. Like the threads in a tapestry are interwoven, so are the stories of the many, many families that have entered our doors. Bessie Bennett brought Leona Jenkins, now Leona Elfrey, to Berean. Eventually, Leona's husband Bob was saved. He worked 30 years in the bus ministry from its beginning until his passing, bringing thousands of children to church. Even today, more than 25 years later, it is possible to find adults in town who remember riding Mr. Jenkins' bus. Their daughter, Dee, started Berean's ministry to the deaf in 1981. Today, both she and her husband, Doug, also are involved in our Shepherds and Senior Saints ministries. Leona Jenkins, in turn, was a huge encouragement to Kathy Morin when their family first moved here from Minnesota. Leona taught Kathy to win souls to the Lord, and the rest, as they say, is history. Dale Stewart and his sister Janet, now Gilbert, were saved at Vacation Bible School while Berean was still on the corner of Maine and Beecher. Janet served faithfully in the Shepherds and Children's Ministries for as long as she was able. Chuck Pearson led Dale to the Lord and discipled him over the years. Dale, along with his wife Carol, have since served in many ministries as well, including children's work, deaf ministry, soul winning, and even missions work, with the inception of Fundamental Baptist Missions for Laymen, a program that inspired a number of our own church people to serve as both short- and long-term missionaries, Tom and Margot Denias being one example. Dale and Debbie Bowman came to Berean as a result of a soul-winning call, having been led to the Lord by Dale Stewart. They became faithful members, and Dale eventually became a deacon, creating a unique three-generation dynamic with Chuck Pearson, Dale Stewart, and Dale Bowman all serving as deacons simultaneously until Chuck's graduation to heaven in 2015. Today, the Bowmans also serve in nursery and head up the Reformers Unanimous program, Bill Cook was saved after he was invited to a youth activity by a shy but sweet Christian young lady named Nancy. He was also fostered by a faithful church member, Mrs. Ailing. His experience with Berean and also Mrs. Ailing's love and faithfulness was profound enough that after years away, Bill relocated his family back to Michigan from Pittsburgh, where he became the treasurer and worked in many ministries, including the Fair Ministry, the Shepherd's Ministry, Boys Brigade, and others. Today, Bill and Nancy Cook's children and grandchildren are found serving the Lord both here at Berean as well as in churches across the nation and on the mission field. Four of his children and two of his grandchildren have been on staff full-time at Berean, combining for a total of over 70 years in service to our Lord here at Berean. And so the story continues, one person touching the life of another person who in turn touches another. Thus, ministries were started, buildings were built, and the work continued. Berean Baptist Church has an amazing 75-year heritage. So much more could be said, but the theme remains the same. Faithful people who wholeheartedly serve all out and have touched thousands of lives over the years. Whose life will be next?
Wayne Bennett, a man on his deathbed praying for his son, a son that wasn't interested, not at all. Donna will tell the story, and uh, a, a man that had absolutely nothing to do with God, nothing to do with church, wasn't interested. But his dad was dying, and a preacher came, Preacher Yaxley, a man that loved the Lord and preached the truth. Praise God for people that preach the truth. And a man that not only knew Jesus himself, but he had the love of Jesus in his heart, and he was able to love the Bennett family. A man that prayed, a man that prayed, and then a group of people that prayed, not only for Wynn Bennett as he passed into heaven, but they prayed for Harold Bennett to trust Christ as Savior. Do you know anybody that's that real hard heart you just don't think can get saved? I, I want you to understand anybody can get saved. And people prayed, and a preacher prayed, and a preacher preached and told the truth. And Harold Bennett, though he had a hard heart, trusted Jesus Christ as Savior. Now, that's, that's one soul. Think about that, one soul. Just like so many folks who were saved. I had a hard heart. You had a hard heart. You may be here tonight, and you've never trusted Christ as your Savior and maybe you would say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I'm not too hard. Well, you need to be saved. You need to trust Jesus Christ as Savior because God loves you. He sent his son to die on the cross. That's why we celebrate Christmas. Jesus came to live a perfect life and then to die on an old rugged cross so that we could be saved. And if you would trust Christ as Savior tonight, that, that would make this night so much better. If you've never done that, I trust that you will come to Christ tonight. In a moment, we'll give an invitation. You'll have an opportunity to come, and someone will take a Bible, and they'll show you how you can be saved. But then there was a church that formed after many were saved. 
and a church that decided to go all out. And they were challenged by the word of God to go all out. And Chuck and Ruby Pearson, I've, I've thought about this often. I always do this time of year as I think about the church history. Why do they move from Oklahoma to Adrian, Michigan? You see, folks, there's so many things we don't understand. And I, I can imagine in their lives, they wondered themselves, why would we move to Adrian, Michigan? But then that night, there was a knock on their door. Because somebody, again, a man who got saved years before, who had a hard heart, but he got saved, his life has changed, he's knocking on doors, and they just happened to knock on the door of Chuck and Ruby Pearson. And then you know the rest of the story. Chuck and Donna get saved and grow up together in, in, in the church and, and eventually get married. Chuck leads Dale Stewart to the Lord. Dale Stewart leads Dale Bowman to the Lord. And that's just one story. Are you listening to me tonight? That's one story. 75 years. In 75 years, nearly 70,000 people have been saved as a result. And I'm talking about with our, our own ministries. That's right here. 75 years, nearly 75 Thousand. That's through soul winning, through fair ministry, through our junior churches, our children's churches, our church services. 70,000 have been saved. And each one of those souls has a story. Think about that. I wonder what your story is tonight. You might be here tonight and you were saved right here at Berean Baptist Church. Maybe you were saved at this altar. Maybe you were saved over in the school building. Could have been a school chapel time. You may have been saved in, in a junior church time over in the school. You might have been saved out in one of the buses. Over the years, can you imagine all the children who have come by riding a bus? And you know your story. It's an important story. I've been talking about it all this month, really, how important you are. Amen. How important each one. We, we get to hear about Harold and Bessie Bennett. What a wonderful story. But you have a story. I wonder what your story is. In John chapter 1 and verse 40, I talked about this on Wednesday night. And, and uh, John the Baptist, his ministry was to proclaim Jesus, to proclaim the coming Messiah. And he had a wonderful, wonderful ministry. But he, he, he had his own disciples. And John the Baptist said this. He said about Jesus, he said, he must increase and I must decrease. And as soon as Jesus came to him and, and, and he saw Jesus, he immediately led his disciples to go to Jesus. Now think about that. John the Baptist led his disciples to go to Jesus. And then in John chapter 1, verse 40, the Bible says, one of the two, one of those two disciples which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother, Simon, Simon Peter. You say, I know that name. Let's see, there's a book of 1 Peter. Like, yeah. Wow. And where did that start? Well, that started with John the Baptist doing exactly what he said he had to do. Decrease me and increase Jesus. And we know the story of Peter who then went on and, and had a big part in reaching Thousands and thousands of people. Isaiah 32, 20 says, Blessed are ye that sow beside all waters. And I think about 75 years, Berean Baptist Church has tried to sow by all waters. Everywhere we can. Lenaway County is 60 miles, about 60 miles from corner to corner. Over 100,000 people. And we've run buses. We've knocked on doors, just about knocked on every door in Lenaway County. We've had a fair ministry. We've had our shepherd's ministry and bus ministries to all those. We've had our vacation Bible school. We've had prison ministries, jail ministries, nursing home ministries. And, and the whole goal all along for 75 years, reach that one. Amen. That one Harold Bennett. That Harold Bennett who had such a hard heart, maybe people said, oh, I'm not going to talk to him, he's too hard. Let me tell you something, nobody is too hard 
for Jesus. Amen. And, and that one who was saved had an impact, such an impact. And perhaps if he doesn't get saved, we're not here today. I wonder how many one mores there are out there. I say to Berean Baptist Church, let's keep going all out. Amen. I, I couldn't help but think as Donna, of course, is here tonight, and, and um, <laughs> Donna was just a child then, just a, almost a teenager a, a, in the beginning of the church and everything, and I was, I was looking at these young people, maybe, um, maybe Holly, that might have been Donna's age then, and Holly, I wonder, I wonder 75 years ago, in my mind, I started thinking about Holly sitting there in the back and her hair's gray and she's maybe got a walker and she's remembering this night and she's remembering all of her vacation Bible schools and her junior churches and, and all of her preaching times and all the times at the altar and her time she got up to sing at the Christmas cantata and she's got memories because there's hundreds and hundreds of more that have followed Amen. since this night. One more, one more, one more, and every one is an amazing, amazing story. What is your story tonight? Let's all bow our heads, please.